Dale Spalding discovered remarkable stories when he was researching his family over 30 years. He sat down and wrote a book about it. It's called Fortitude. And Dale Spalding is here today to share how he navigated the process of publishing his family's history. And he's going to share some of the lessons that he learned with you along the way. Welcome to the show, Dale. Thanks, Lisa. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, publishing a book because all this culminated in a book. And I know many folks are uh, curious about what that process is like and what you did. Can you give us a quick rundown on what does it take to get published? Right. So first of all, you have to really embrace this idea of being a self-published author, right? Don't, don't think that, that someone's going to knock on your door and and drop $5 million in your lap. Please write this book. You know, no, that's, that doesn't happen to, to, (laughs) to most people. As a matter of fact, I was talking with a local author one day and, he said he was meeting with a, a, at a book signing with a dad and his young son that he's going to be an author someday. This is going to be great and all that. And he pulled that aside and said, well, to be real, uh, your son probably has a better chance of being in the NFL than he does to be a, a well-known book author. <laughs> so that's what it's like. It's hard. So, so yeah, you don't go in with that with those expectations. You embrace this idea of being a self-published author and but, you know, you do want to do your best work. So, you know, I say edit like a professional. If you're going to publish a book, don't just write down your ideas in a manuscript and hand it to an editor and expect them to fix it. Right. Edit like a professional. I can't tell you how many times I read, edited, read, edited, rewrote, edited. I don't know, hundreds of times before I was got the, the manuscript to a point where I was ready to give it to a professional editor. And even so, even then, they found so many issues with commas. You know, I just, oh, you know, I, I, I guess I don't use the, the right amount of commas. Right? So that was a big one. Lots of commas. But but yeah, and plus, you know, words that, uh, you know, uh, prompted versus promoted. You know, you think you spell something right, but little things like that are everywhere. So edit like a professional. and uh, But get help. Get help. When you want to publish, you know, you don't want to just print your manuscript down at Office Depot or Staples, get help. So I found this self, this company that that specializes in with uh, self-publishers called Gatekeeper Press. And there's lots of them out there. I just chose them because I just did my homework and, and I liked uh, their product. And they were wonderful. They helped me every step of the way. You know, they have professional editors on staff. They have professional formatters that can take a Word document and format it into a book. Their graphic arts designer helped me with the the cover of, of the book. I you know I just kind of gave them a vision of what I th- I thought it would look like, and they gave me several designs that I could choose from. So get help, get a, a, a company to help you. They can help you with the legal process too, getting that international standard book number, uh, the LCN number for the Library of Congress, all the copyright legal wording for that that they can help you with. So it really is important if you want to publish a book to find one of these companies. And there's a lot of them out there, but do your homework, do your homework, read the reviews before you you choose one. And uh, because uh, they are, they're really wonderful. And in my Gatekeeper Press, I can't say enough about, about them. Also, when you get published, you want to have a book landing page, which is, that's just, you know, a website that people can come to to learn more about the book and learn more about you as the author, find out where to buy the book. They can uh, read reviews about the book. Uh, I have a blog, so they can also follow your blog and learn more. So uh, you, know, you wanna find a, a book, get a book landing page. You can uh, purchase your URL and you can choose to even have that as a, a book title or maybe the, your name. I, I chose dalespalding.com because I didn't know if I was gonna write some other books. So now I, I own that. And for an $18 investment, that's not too bad to have your own website, right? Your own URL. So so you need to have that too, a book landing page for people to go to. And then also uh, for publishing the idea of print on demand for folks that might not know what that, what that means. So there's no warehouse out there with a hundred copies of my book, Fortitude. As a matter of fact, there's no warehouse with any copies of my book. It's print on demand. 
So when someone orders the book from Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever, then that one copy is is printed, whether it's hard copy or or paperback, whatever they choose, and then printed, bounded, and sent to them. It's print on demand. So that's wonderful technology that we have today. So that you know, and that's really good for the different uh, retail partners and that they don't have to print copies to keep in a warehouse. And finally, you know, don't forget. Uh, oh, yeah. Visibility. Not having to get inventory. Yes, exactly. Right. Right. And that's expensive. Inventory is expensive. And so I uh, don't forget that the indie book retailers don't, don't just stop at Amazon. You know, uh, have your book for, for sale out there at places uh, like Books a Million and Indie Bound and The Bookshop and uh, ABE books and Goodreads and even Target and Walmart. My books are available even online there. So you know, don't forget those places as well. You know, just don't just use Amazon because a lot of folks uh, like those smaller independent book retailers to purchase from. So uh, yeah, and again, if you have uh, an organization, a, a company to help you, like Gatekeeper Press, they have all these retail partners that they will put the book out at. So. Uh, they're wonderful to help you with that. So that's sort of the kind of the big picture and, and getting getting published the steps. Yeah, those print on demand companies, they can automate that process. So you don't have to worry about how do you figure out how to reach out to all the retailers. You can just click buttons and select what you want, which is great. And I think, you know, having your own book landing page is really good advice because um, there's only so much you can put on the description of your book, right. but you have the ability to put so much more information on your own page, which of course is perfect for Google because if somebody's Googling on your family, those topics, that battalion, whatever it is, right. your page may pop up right. and that gives it so much more exposure than if you just rely on uh, the landing pages that you mentioned for, for the retailers. So I love that right. advice. So what are some of those lessons that you learned along the way? Maybe pitfalls you can help us to keep right. out of. Well, we could probably spend two hours on this topic, but these are at least the big ones, okay? Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely stumbled along the way in this process. So I think the, the, the big one for me was uh, that I didn't do was multiple reviews of my manuscript. I, I, I kind of rushed the process a little bit because I wanted to get published. I wanted to get it out there. And so... I'd say slow down a little bit. You know, go through the process of yourself, a lot of good self-editing, get a professional editor to help you. But then when you and the professional editor agree you're done, don't say you're done yet. Get your manuscript out to others, some friends or family, people that are detailed oriented persons that can read the book and give you some feedback because uh, that's what, I didn't follow this process, but after the book was released a month later, one of my cousins who's, you know, a PhD guy that's written several books himself uh, is that detailed oriented guy. And he came back and said, hey, I love the book, but, you know, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and so I, I, I said, oh, man. So I went back and, and uh, quickly had it uh, re-released with those uh, edits changed. So, yeah, take your time, slow down, get a bunch of people to, to read it. That was my big lessons learned. Uh, the source notes, I mentioned that earlier, as you research, uh, make sure you keep really good records on source notes. You know, where did you find that information? Because, you know, when you're writing nonfiction, you've got to capture that, your source notes. You can't just put out historical facts and data without sourcing where that information came from. So I really messed that up. I had to go back and find a lot of that stuff, retrace my steps. So do that as you go. Uh, writer's block, you know, though that's a, a real thing, don't beat yourself up over that. It's okay uh, to just stop and take a week off and look at something else for a while. But that's a real thing, creative slowdown. It's real. So just don't beat yourself over it. Just deal with it and, and you will rekindle the passion again. It happened to me several times. Now, invest in that process that we talked about earlier with uh, editing and and getting a graphic arts designer and uh, formatting and getting help along the way. Don't rush the process, you know, uh, respect it because, you know, a lot of people have gone before you. So uh, don't rush the process. And also uh, don't settle either. You know, uh, I've heard some reviews about some of these uh, publishing companies that kind of want to push you through because they just want the product out the door. But uh, 
They keep her press with me. They, I'd go, oh, sorry, but I got another change. Oh, no, I know this is the tenth one. But please forgive me. And they're like, no, we will keep iterating until you say, until you're happy, until you're done. We will keep doing that. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. And so I really am thankful for that because I'm, I'm just a perfectionist, I guess, in a, in a maybe in a bad way. <laughs> so I, I, I had to keep going through. <laughs> and so they were wonderful. You know, don't settle. Uh, get get those uh, reviews of the book pre-release. I didn't do that either. So it just was out there all of a sudden. And then I got reviews like a month or two later. So if you could do that pre-release, I think that's a good idea. If you'll notice the professional book people that you see that in the back of their books, they have like comments of reviews. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do that. Right. Right. Uh, figure out marketing. Here's what happened with me. So the book was released, I think on May 28th. So on May 29th, I started to figure out what marketing is on a book. <laughs> I didn't think about it at all until after the book was released. But, so now what? Yeah, so I had to, I started, that was day one and started to figure out what marketing a book was. So yeah, figure that out a little bit earlier, maybe. So you're ready to go. You have some of those marketing plans already in place. And that wasn't me. It was the day I, I was so focused on getting the book done. I didn't even think about marketing. <laughs> And then uh, I, I talked earlier about connecting with local authors and and then you know, that idea of captured stories about aging relatives. I think we talked about that as well, but I wish I'd have done more of that. And over the 30 years, remember, I've been doing this for 30 years. I wish I could go back for those relatives that have passed over these last 30 years and talk to them. But that's that's too late. Yeah. Well, I know from um, talking to some folks, some of these companies, you can even buy a separate package where they can do the marketing for you. So they can kind of prep that even while you're busy writing your book. So I guess depending on how much money you have (laughs) and want to spend on the process, you could do that. Yeah. Well, Dale, um, the book again is Fortitude. And tell folks about that website that you created, how they can find you and how they can get a copy of the book. Okay, sure. So uh, dalespalding.com, you can see. Uh, Be careful of the spelling because if you think of Spalding Sporting Goods, it, it does not have a U in it. Okay, so we're we we all connect. The Spalding Sporting Goods founder and me, we connect back with Edward, the first guy to to come over here. But you know, we the name a U got plugged into the name, and I tell that story in in the book. So Spalding without a U. So DaleSpalding.com is my website, and I'd love to connect with any of of your listeners. I, there's different ways you can connect there. You can see Facebook, Twitter. LinkedIn, uh, you could email me, or you could just uh, press the contact button there, and you could you know, just write connect with me right there on, on my website. But I'd love to connect with any of the listeners today, to if they have any questions, and uh, and would love for anybody that that loves history and loves personal stories of just regular, ordinary, faithful, patriotic, hardworking people, then then I think you'll enjoy fortitude. And uh, they'd love to have some your listeners take a look and uh, let me know what they think. Um, Dale, thank you so much for joining us here today and sharing your story and your book. And congratulations. It's such a terrific accomplishment. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our, our time together today. And uh, and I look forward to continue to learn from you. You know, I've subscribed to your newsletter already and, and watched your podcast. And also I'm going to continue to, to, to learn uh, from you in the days to come. So thank you. 